Jane paintings. And, and this is actually acrylic. She was one of the first artists to really embrace acrylics. It took a while for them to catch on. People were really, you know, used to oil painting. It was a pretty new thing, and most people didn't really know what to do. Believe it or not, the consistency, Henry Levison um, is the man who invented the water-based acrylic. He, came, he brought the first water-based acrylic to the artist market. And um, it was the soft body. It wasn't the heavy body. And the oil painters were used to a heavier, thicker, more impasto type paint. So my suspicion is people just didn't take to it. They were used to a heavy body of paint and to have this really fluid, thinned out paint was just not really conducive to what they were doing with their paint. So anyway, so here's Helen Frankenthaler. So we're going to do stain painting. Remember what I said about oil paint? If you try and do this with oil, there's acids in the oil that eventually will rot away canvas or paper. So it's advisable not to do any oil painting on an unprimed support. Always put a primer on there to protect the support from acids. Just some other sizes. Yeah. So this is, this is the effect that we're going to learn how to get with the acrylics. This is staining. So by staining, you're not priming. You're actually inviting the pigment to soak into the canvas and maybe spread out a little bit. I didn't show you more sluice, but again, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with his work. Um, these big washes. Now he was using something called Magna, which was a solvent-based acrylic made by Louis Ocour. Um, and they talk a bit about that. And so he would do these big kind of washy things. And that's what made this kind of oily edge there. That was the salty. Yeah, exactly. But did, did they fade at all those things? That I don't know. I don't I mean the ones I've seen look perfectly fine. Yeah. Do you want to pass this around and get that? Okay, so the secret to getting the pigment to sink is that flow aid I talked. So what I've done in this bottle is I've mixed up the flow aid. It's a concentrate. So it's one part flow aid to 20 parts water. So this would make a gallon of flow aid water. So you get a lot. Can you mix it all over at a time? Yes, you could, yeah. And it's recommended to mix it with distilled water. I never do. All our water. So what I need help with. As many as we have brushes, so we'll use these brushes, these brushes. What we need to do is wet this canvas. Yeah, that might get a little messed up. Here. The best one, the best way to do this is the stiffer, like a stiff brush like this, because we're going to need to work it into the fibers of the canvas. So, what I'm going to do is actually, you know what, I'll mix up a little more and we can do a few cups of this around here. So, we'll just say that's one part to 20. And then I don't squirt it. It's tempting to squirt it on there, but you know what happens? The line from the squirt becomes part of the drawing on the canvas. And I'm that could be an interesting effect, but usually it's been an accident that I didn't like. So, so who wants to grab a brush and try this out? I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to take a brush. And we're just going to dampen this whole canvas with it. Okay? So you see what I'm doing? This is the, I, the reason I like this particular brush is because it's got very stiff bristles and the fluid is just going right into the fibers of the canvas. We don't want it to just sit on top because, you know, the sizing in the canvas, it could just see how it bubble it sits up there. We want to get it right into the fibers. So, okay, so people grab a brush because we're going to do this fast. We're going to get this whole thing dampened. Could you do that with a spray bottle? This, you can see, you know, potential. 